Okay, welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. It is July the 30th, 2020. Thanks for being here. Today's session, we're gonna talk about open action items. We'll review Adopt Open JDK for Docker on Alpine, Debian, Buster, and CentOS. Uh, Alex will talk about deprecation of Docker agents images using the Debian operating system stretch. Uh, and then Rishab has a question about extension development that we'll take address. So please to note that the meeting URL has switched to the CDF Zoom account and I've done all the actions for it. Uh, I have not completed the JEP for Docker operating system support and platform selection rules yet. Yes, I'll get to it. The Docker build work rework PR, that I believe is actually distinct from the Alpine transition, right? From, for the adopt open JDK transition. Yes, it was uh, rather for platform support. Great. So adopt open JDK is also on the table. Right, okay, so this one, this one still is open. We've still got work to do on it. It's got, looks like some request for changes from, from Alex and yeah, good, okay. I, I need to look back at that one again because um, I think he has um, done all the changes that I asked for. So I will look at that again today and update my review. Great, all right. I would like to get that one in before the adopt open JDK switch, just to, um, because Jim's put a lot of work in and it's looking good from my side. So I'd like to get that in if we can. Okay, great. And now the, the, the build rework that Jim did, that is just reworking current images that doesn't provide us with, um, with S390X image or PowerPC image. That's correct because um, we need to switch to adopt open JDK for those. Got it. Okay, great. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks. Okay, then review the Alpine image update PR. And I think this one may be, this is the use adopt open JDK one. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so this is the one that's mentioned in that next item on the agenda here. And again, the action there is more review. Yeah. Uh, and given the sequence, more review of this one, of review and final sign off of 922. Right, and then I would have to um, possibly do a little bit of rework on my PR, switch on adopt. Um, right. It may have been so much files changed and stuff like that, so. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was mentioning uh, I am migrated Jenkins have uh, runner images to adopt open GDK. So the recent beta 15 release uh, runs on the adopt open GDK. There were a few differences in packaging, for example, Git, etc. But in general, it works pretty well. I think in most of our images, we manually install Git anyway, or yeah. have the commands to. So I think we're okay there, but that's a good thing to know. Yeah. Also, there is an interesting image called uh, Adopt Open GDK 11 GRE, which Alpine, which is actually just 50 megabytes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it tested it with Jenkins File Runner. It works quite well. Uh, well, I'm trying to compress my own part because Jenkins File Runner is about 200 uh, megabytes right now because of, yeah, because of for the fact that it's prototype. Uh, but yeah, my overall experience with Adopt OpenJDK is perfectly fine. Uh, all the tests, etc., pass without uh, any issues. And well, it's not a surprise because Sejink uh, also runs on Adopt OpenJDK and we haven't noticed any problems. That's very good news, excellent. Mm -hmm. Anything else on Adopt OpenJDK for Docker on Alpine, Debian, and CentOS? Okay, next topic, deprecate the Docker agent, oops, my fat fingers, deprecate the Docker agent stretch images. Alex. 
Yeah, so as we go to switch to adopt OpenJDK, they do not have a stretch image. Um, so this is make, right now, this is for agent Docker images. Um, most of the Linux images are still using just the OpenJDK base image. And so if we move to adopt OpenJDK, we would not be able to um, have a stretch version of adopt OpenJDK. Uh, so um, I propose deprecating those. So Debian stretch would not be included. So basically we would drop Debian stretch when we switch to, when we switch to adopt OpenJDK. And, and I would say deprecate because um, even if we still, if we keep building with OpenJDK, then um, we've seen that those images are not updated. And so there are possible security issues um, going forward in the future. So that's my reasoning behind deprecating uh, is, to, is because they would not be able to be updated going forward. So we would continue delivering Debian stretch images, um, but using using the open JDK rather than adopt open JDK? Well, what there is, what, what's there now? But oh. like I said, the, the problem is that there are no updates to that image. So if there are security issues that come up, and that's a problem we can't update it. Uh, and so that's why I propose deprecating. Got it, okay. So OpenJDK, when they released 262, for instance, 8U262, they did not update the Debian stretch image? Uh, that's my understanding. Ah, uh, okay, all right. So that, that explains why I think mine is still running 232 because it's based on the, the Jenkins core. Okay, thanks. Uh, any discussion needed around the, the question that it seems like it's a, a, a clear, clear thing that we should do, acknowledging that we want updated images and Buster has been out for a long time. The next, the next release after Debian stretch has been out for a very long time. So we just have to determine whether we want to unpublish those images or just leave them as is with a disclaimer somehow. Um, that, that would be the question that I would like the, the group to consider. Uh, so yeah, what we could do, we could actually do a final release of these images and uh, inject the deprecation warning right inside uh, the entry point. So anyone uh, who launches this image gets an error message in SDR that uh, the image is deprecated. And uh, after that, yeah, we can link uh, them somewhere. And uh, after that, we can stop shipping the images. That sounds good to me. Okay, so Oleg, I wanted to be sure I captured what you said it was final release of the images with a deprecation warning in the entry point, and then, mm -hmm. then it was um, then a lot. Uh, stop, uh, stop publishing them. So whomever uses latest or whatever with this tag, they will get a warning. Whomever uses the last week, they will get a warning. Well, for LCS, yeah, again, we can have one version with the warning. So we'd stop publishing images after the deprecation release. So would the deprecated version remain published for an extended period? So that the, those who aren't immediately upgrading or? Well, I see no practical need to remove it. Okay, all right. Yeah, I understand that we might want uh, to remove it just to highlight the problem if somebody uses them. But at the same time, it may cause unpredictable uh, impact on uh, automation flows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would rather uh, just stop publishing them similarly to like we did before with uh, renaming, uh, with uh, terminology updates. Well, yeah, for terminology, we still keep, uh, keep publishing old images, but in principle, I wouldn't do them. Great. So any dissent from the, that proposal, that sounds wonderful to me.
Alex, particularly for you, is that okay with you based yeah, on what? Fine. Okay. And a deprecation warning. Yeah. Great. Yeah, one question to you, Alex. So what do we do with uh, Debian Buster? Because the default adopt of NGDK images are actually based on Ubuntu, not on Buster. They, they have a um, Buster image. Okay, so um, yeah, you will keep a Buster as a default, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's rather Jenkins uh, default image. Oh yes, right. Jenkins default image will be adopt open JDK Buster. So they do have a Buster image for adopt open JDK. Yes. Okay. Great. Anything else on deprecation of stretch? All right, so next was a question from Rishab. Rishab, extension development question. Yes, so, uh, so I've been trying to uh, develop a new extension, uh, implement a new extension from an extension point uh, within the Git plugin. And the extension I'm devel developing is in uh, the GitHub branch source plugin. So my question is that uh, while I'm uh, implementing the extension point in the GitHub branch source plugin, I need a class from the Git plugin, which is not, uh, it doesn't exist in the existing release of the plugin. And uh, to do it locally, I, I, I have a simple hack of, uh, actually it's not a good hack, but I just replace the jar in DM to repository. But what is the uh, right way to, what is the right approach to do it? How would I, since it's a Git plugin is not an external dependency uh, within the POM of GitHub branch source. I assume it's been uh, taken from the parent POM uh, or something like that. I'm not sure how is it being uh, added to the GitHub branch source plugin. So how, how what is the right approach? Uh, I think, I think you would want to add that dependency um, add the dependency to to the uh, branch source plugin that you're developing against. So on the Git plugin, add the Git plugin dependency as a, as an entry in its palm. And then the crucial thing is use an incrementals version number as the uh, as the version on which you depend. Okay. So, so if we look at, I'm going to bring up, um, let's bring up here, we'll just do it in this other window. Bring up Jenkins here. And let's look at uh, the Git plugin. Oops, let's look, it's, it's the Git plugin you need, not the Git client plugin, right? Yes. Okay, so if we The look, extension point is declared in the Git plugin. Perfect. All right, so if we look at the at the builds on the master branch as one example. And you can also do this with, with um, should be able to do this with pull requests as well. But let's take a look here. This should have, uh, no, wait a second. Is this failing to publish incrementals? Okay, so Rishab, I may, I, let's see if we can do it here. Borrow one from here and Okay, so it looks like I have a fix to make. I apologize for this. I'm going to have to show you with Git client plugin. That's a good cause for embarrassment. Sorry for the embarrassment of the, the, the demonstration I wanted to show is a complete failure because it's not available. There's a, the, Jesse Glick was very kind. He pointed out, look, Mark, you're being a little too, too tricky in the build plugin call that you're making in your broken incremental publishing. So we fix that in the Git client plugin where you should be able to see here we go. Now this, so I'm going to make this much bigger so that it's actually readable. Oops. Okay. Okay. So when you look at the, at the successful artifacts, 
built hmm. from the Git plugin, you'll see the Git client plugin, you'll see this magic here in that we actually publish the jar and the HPI every time. And this is an hmm. incremental that you can then reference in your palm. So, so it should be enough to reference that thing, but we've got to fix it in the Git plugin so you can do the same. Either that okay. or we have to release. And I'd rather not release with a preliminary version just so that you can do development. So this notion of an incremental, uh, let's see if I can find on Jenkins.io, because there is a, uh, there are, there are good, good instructions or good insights from, here we go, from Jesse hmm. Glick on how to do parallel component development. Okay. So this one is specific to, to Jenkins core, but um, it's the same thing where you grab the version ID and then update your plugin palm to use the version ID based on that. Okay. Now, now again, my apologies. This means either your first action is to fix build plug fix the Jenkins file on the Git plugin, or my first action is to fix the Jenkins file on the Git plugin. Um, it's probably better if you do it, model it after yeah. the one that's in the Git client plugin. Uh, it will Shot be sad. It. It's sad for me because I like all the sophistication I put into that Jenkins file. It does random version numbers. It does all sorts of elegant little things, but it breaks an important feature. Okay, I'll, I'll look into how it's been implemented in the Git client plugin and I'll try to do it for Git plugin as well. Yeah, for what it was, you can always deploy timestamp uh, snapshots, which is uh, the easiest way to get something running and demonstrate it without incrementals. Oh, oh, that's right. Um, okay, so Oleg, to be more precise or to be to be more detailed there, he could just do a make um, or a, a Maven clean install on, from the Git plugin directory, and then he could reference that. Is that correct? Or tell yeah, me Maven more about clean, uh, deploy. Maven. Okay, so alternately, yeah. use Maven clean deploy locally. And that will then then depend. Then you would depend on the snapshot, right? No, it, well, it's a snapshot, but it's a timestamp snapshot. So what ah. it means uh, that uh, it gets deployed to the uh, Jenkins Artifactory, and yeah, it will remain there for a particular amount of time, if I recall correctly, two weeks. And during these two weeks, it can be referenced uh, from any pull request in uh, other component, so that you can test it. Uh, so my fear is that he probably does not have permission to deploy to the to the Git plugins um, section you of the. Do not have uh, to have permissions. Oh, okay. You, right. you can uh, deploy uh, snapshots if you're logged in to Artifactory once. So you still need uh, to configure your environment in order to push um, uh, releases but you don't have uh, to have release permissions to deploy snapshot. Okay, even uh, Oleg, even if I don't deploy it and I build it locally in my uh, in a machine, uh, will uh, the GitHub branch source plugin, wouldn't it be able to find the uh, jar snapshot jar from my M2 repository for my local de development? Yeah, so for local development, you can just uh, run clean install. So clean yeah, install exactly. uh, is not good uh, for uh, uh, testing because <clears throat> uh, clean install is just limited to your machine. So if you want to yes. uh, demonstrate it on CI, you need something better. Hmm. Uh, I understand. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I collect the password from the artifactory, install that password. You don't need to, to uh, collect passwords from Artifactory. You just need to, to follow guidelines for. Oh, so it doesn't. It doesn't require any credentials at all. No, it requires your Jenkins credentials, but uh, they are Jenkins credentials. You don't have to retrieve password from Artifactory. Ah, okay. 
So it, it then place your uh, Jenkins password in the in the Maven uh, settings. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. And then Maven deploy. Uh, and you say it will last, it will survive for two, it will uh, last for two weeks? I don't recall the exact uh, time, um, but yeah, it remains active for long enough time so that you can uh, get your PR verified. And even if it disappears, you can always uh, deploy um, a new incremental version. And Great. Yeah, actually, yeah. I use uh, timestamp uh, snapshots for the uh, development because uh, in such approach, I don't have to wait for incrementals to be built. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, it's a kind of not so official way being compared to incrementals because yeah, the most of contributors moved on to incrementals, but yeah, I still uh, remain on the previous flow. That's that's great. Thank you. So, Rishab, any questions? No, I I understand what I have to do now. Thank you so much, Oleg and Mark. I'll uh, I'll use this technique to uh, depend on the GitHub the unreleased classes I need to depend on. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Oleg. Thank you very much. I wasn't aware of the alternate technique. I'd never never. I'd always just done the Maven clean install and accepted. That's that's really great. Okay, we can take it offline, but yeah. All right. Okay. Any other topics for our meeting today? Mm, not for me. So maybe a related topic is switching um, um, CI Jenkins IO to use GitHub uh, application authentication. And for example, uh, packaging repositories uh, have been already switched. So it means that uh, Docker, images, and also uh, native packages, when you run CI, they uh, authenticate as a GitHub application. And uh, the next step is to actually have a um, uh, warning Sanji plugin. It's already installed on CI Jenkins IO. And yeah, one of JSOC students, Kajay, he is working on um, integration of this uh, GitHub Checks API. Uh, this integration has been released, but it hasn't been uh, yet deployed on CI Jenkins IO. But once it's there, we can, uh, for example, publish uh, Docker scan reports, uh, etc. Because uh, there are standard formats which uh, will be supported by working SNG, if I recall correctly. And definitely, uh, we can uh, start uh, doing things like just static analysis or whatever for the images. And that, yeah. No, you had mentioned that plugins need some additional additional discussion or additional approvals. Could you describe more? Just uh, models from users. So literally, it's one setting to be changed. And for example, I already changed Jenkins Core uh, to use GitHub app authentication. Uh, so. Yeah, for plugins, it just impacts a uh, much bigger number of people. Uh, so why didn't uh, implement it without additional feedback? If you're interested, it's in the infrastructure mailing list. Yes, absolutely. So my wholehearted approval, that's, that's really positive. Mm -hmm. And again, Another thing, uh, so if somebody is interested uh, in advanced plugin management, there is a pull request from Tim Jackham, uh, which uh, includes uh, plugin installation managers to into efficient Docker images. Now that one, it seemed like there were some, some issues that Tim was still working through. Mm -hmm. uh, that Plugin installation manager needs some further changes before that's ready to go production? Yes, uh, it has issues. Um, but in principle, for common scenarios, for example, when you define now all plugins on the top level, it works quite well. Uh, so it's 
once it's uh, released, uh, it will be available for evaluation. And yeah, hopefully it will uh, help to facilitate more feedback. So what we discussed uh, basically um, uh, the installation manager will be shipped as preview so that uh, anyone who's interested can try it out. Great, okay. So when, when we say ship this preview, does that mean that it will be in the Jenkins slash Jenkins image or do I need to use the experimental image? Uh, Jenkins, Jenkins. Okay. So it's just but a it, Yeah, it won't be enabled by default. So what it means that install plugins SH script remains basically the same. So unless you explicitly switch to the new flow, you will be using the old scripts. Any other items we should note in the in the in the in the meeting? Nothing for me. All right, let's call an end. Thank you. We've got Google Summer of Code meetings, uh, presentations coming in. If I remember right, about an hour, right, Oleg? Where we start thirty minutes, thirty minutes, 30 minutes from now. Looking forward to that. Oh, oh, 90, okay. So mm -hmm. looking forward to Google, Google Summer of Code demonstrations later today. It'll be great. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks, and see you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.